And good morning. Welcome to a new song for a new day today. This is Jerry Johnston. And this is Danny Hubbard. Glad you folks are with us here today. We have something very special for you, very important. I hope we'll get this today. Yes, we do. We have two special ladies on with us today from Eagle Forum. Uh, Uni Smith. Uni, are you there? I am. Good morning to you, gentlemen. Good morning. Good to have you with us. Uh, and I'll go into introduction of uni in just a moment. We also have Miss Becky Garretson with us. Becky, are you there? Good morning. Yes. Yes. Good to hear from good. You. Yes. So this technology is working, right? Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, <laughs> especially when Jerry and I are on the board doing hey, something. Man, you never brother. know. Well, let me do an introduction of these uh, young ladies. Um, and tell you who they are. We've done a little bit of promo before this to let you know what we're going to be talking about. But Miss Uni Smith is current president of the National Eagle Forum. She has in the past been president of the uh, Alabama and still is. But she also has uh, taken over from uh, the founder, Miss Phyllis Shafley, who's passed away. And uh, she founded the Alabama Eagle Forum in 1976. She's the longest serving president. She was chairman of the Ethics and Religious Committee in 2011 of the Southern Baptist Convention. She serves currently as a member of the Alabama Supreme Court Standing Committee on Judicial Ethics and has been on that committee since 2008. And there are so many other accomplishments, there's no way that we'd have time. We'd have to go for four hours, five or six hours just to go through them. So, Uni, we appreciate you being on with us this morning. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity, and Becky as well. Well, Becky, Becky is uh, current the executive director of Alabama Eagle Forum. Uh, Becky and her husband found the Wetumpka Tea Party in 2009, which grew to be the largest tea party in Alabama, and she served as the president until 2019, January. Uh, she drew national attention when she delivered her congressional testimony about the IRS abuses of Wetunka Tea Party mm. in 2013. Did a fantastic job yeah. before Congress. And she's been an active member of the Stop Common Core Task Force in Alabama. Uh, Becky and I and Uni all worked together on that for many years. She ran for U.S. Congress in 2016, and she's a frequent guest on Fox News, Fox Business, and multiple conservative talk uh, programs such as Sean Hannity, Stuart Varney, Glenn Beck, Rush Limbaugh, and many, many more. And, and and again, another lady that we could not go over all her awards and accomplishments mm -hmm. because it's so, so long. Becky, good to have you with us also. Well, thank you. It's an honor to be with you. Hey, we needed we needed to have some canned applause. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> These are nice. Where, where is the applause? Woo! Well, these. <laughs> These ladies never stop. They're 24-7, it seems like. Uh, uh, they're like the President Trump. They don't sleep. Uh, <laughs> they just keep going. Uh, uh, and uh, today we're going to talk about something that a lot of people would have no clue about. Yeah, we're, we're blindsided by this, folks. There is a bill that's been passed uh, called SB 397. It was passed in the legislative session this legislative year, 2019, and it's going to be voted on as an amendment to the Alabama Constitution in March of 2020. In brief, uh, this bill, if it's passed, is going to move, remove our rights as citizens to vote for our state board of education members. And members in the future are going to be appointed by the governor. So this becomes a political uh, uh, control, what it boils down to, along with some other things that we're going to talk about. Uh, and there's bait and switches in here, which we will see also. Um, Uni, uh, or Becky, whichever one wants to go into this, why don't you all tell us a little bit about SB 397 and passed, how it affects us. I'll let Uni start that conversation. All right. Okay. Well, um, the first thing, as you mentioned, certainly, is that we lose our right to elect our State Board of Education members and um, of all things, uh, we want parents and, and other citizens, and grandparents as I am, other citizens in the state, uh, want to have uh, as responsive an individual and individuals as possible uh, representing them uh, with regard to their children's education to uh, provide uh, for appointed 
appointments instead of elections, as we now have by districts, uh, would remove um, accountability and uh, ac- accessibility uh, from from us as parents and citizens, and just place it in the hands of the governor. Well, how difficult is it to reach the governor if you're concerned about what your child is being taught because of a state decision, um, as opposed to going a few miles um, to visit or at least be in touch with your elected state board of education member. So that in itself is of great concern to us. There is discussion as to um, whether appointed boards or elected boards are more effective in terms of academic achievement. And we can go into that, Dan. I know you've done a lot of of, uh, study on that yourself, but um, really there's no significant difference uh, with that as the main factor. There are other factors that determine differences between the states in achievement. The uh, other thing that this bill does is that it, for the first time, puts in the Constitution excuse me, language which addresses the courses of study. And we've never had that before. That's always been in statute. Um, And what it says is that a course of study standards, it requires course of study standards that ensure nationwide consistency and the seamless transfer of students from within and outside of the state. In lieu of common core are the words However, how do you achieve um, nationwide consistency? How can you be consistent? How can our course of study standards be consistent with others across the nation, with other states? And how can we uh, ensure a seamless transfer of students from outside the state if they're not uh, the same, basically the same framework, the same core, as what is being used in other states. So it really, the language itself, enshrines in the Constitution a requirement for national standards as opposed to standards that we don't have to depend on other states in the nation uh, to, to, uh, to dictate to us. Remember. Even though it says in lieu of Common Core, states, 40 states have um, changed the name, 40 other states have changed the name, from Common Core, but they're still aligned with Common Core. So that's mm-hmm. what we would be doing. We would still be aligned with Common Core under this provision. That's right. Yeah, and I remember, uh, Uni and Becky, when we were talking about this Common Core a number of years back and uh, discussing it, people were saying, people who were for it were saying, oh, we need national standards. We need, you know, we need standards so that, you know, that everyone will be on the same page. And that's what they used to get Common Core in. Mm -hmm. Now Common Core has a black eye. When you Mm -hmm. say the word Common Core, people don't look happily on it because, and we'll get into some of the um, successes or, you know, deficits of Common Core here. But It seems like it's the same thing, just changing the name, if it's going to be a national standard. That's right. And then, you know, know, uh, Becky, we we changed the name here in Alabama. I remember when we went before the testimonials, they said, well, it's not Common Core. It's the Alabama standards. Well, no, uh, you could add like 3 or 4% to Common Core, but it's still Common Core. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what the states have done. You weren't allowed to delete any. Right. Yeah, and I, I just wanted to say something that your listeners may be interested in because some of them may be of the military persuasion. And one of the arguments used to pass Common Core back in the day around 2010 is they said military families were so concerned that when they move around that their children have a hard time going from state mm-hmm. to state. But yeah. I want you to know that I'm a military wife. We were in the Air Force. We were in Germany. We were in Asia. Um, in all the time we were in the military, and we were around Army people as well, we never, ever heard that argument that parents were concerned wow. about the standards not being the same. So mm-hmm. when you hear that argument, take that with a grain of salt, because right. I was in that world, and that was, that was never an issue. 
Yeah. You know, if I remember correctly, uh, in one of our studies we did, I believe the armed services children did better in schools anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, they had had more discipline, uh, if I remember correctly on that. But uh, well, you, you're right. It's just uh, it's a matter of they're trying to use this that way. And Common Core has been a disaster. Well, let, let me just say this. Let me read that that uh, the the wording on the statute here. It says, "Course of study standards that ensure nationwide consistency and the seamless transfer of students from within and outside of the state, in lieu or in replacing of Common Core." So, it sounds like all we're changing is the name. It's going to well, be the same thing. That's essentially our point, Jerry, exactly. Mm. You know, I, I know this, that um, if you're wanting to do things that people wouldn't approve of, what you do, uh, if you want to break, I'm not saying these are breaking the law, I'm just saying a person who has a, you know, reputation um, and wants to do things that aren't right, He'll have numbers of different passports with different names on it. He's still the same guy, you know. It's kind of like right. one of these, you know, one of these uh, shows on TV. But you just change the name, and so you're a different person now. But no, you're the same person. Mm -hmm. And it seems like all we're doing is dressing up the same Common Core and calling it a different name and doing the same same thing. But now, ladies, address this. It will be part of the. Alabama Constitution, and we're stuck with it forever. Yes, yes unless we have another yeah. constitutional referendum. Hmm. Right. That's hard Jimmy to do. and I were very concerned, and, and others within Eagle Forum and throughout the kind of stop Common Core people, we went to the sponsor of the bill and explained why this language was bad and explained exactly what it meant. We offered additional language to replace this mm -hmm. language because we knew this was going to enshrine <gasps> something like national standards into our Constitution. We pleaded with them. We went back and forth over and over, and they did not remove it. So they they knew our concerns. They mm -hmm. understood where we were coming from, but they refused to change it. Mm -hmm. That ought to tell you something. Yeah. Let me read. This is from the Eagle Forum newsletter. Okay, and it says Eagle Forum leaders, because people say, well, why don't why don't these folks do something? You know, mm -hmm. haven't they talked to these people? And Eagle Forum leaders met with the bill sponsor. The bill sponsor is Senator Del Marsh, his staff, and other bill supporters. We specifically objected to tying the state to national standards by adding it to the Constitution. We explained that the main purpose of education is not to be seamless among the various states, but to educate children to reach their highest potential. We offered a revision to this section of the bill. It stated, course of study st standards designed to equip Alabama students with academic excellence and with sufficient knowledge of American constitutional principles to be responsible American citizens in lieu of Common Core. Okay, to change that wording, here's what happens. Our concerns and suggestions were similarly rejected. So Dale Marsh, the sponsor of the bill, and the bill supporters rejected this revision by Eagle Forum staff. Just wanted, I just wanted folks to understand that. You know, Uni, uh, you, you all have published... Uh, this federally funded study of the Common Core, and it's called Common Core Sunk U.S. Kids Test Scores. Why don't we talk a little bit about the Common Core disaster and why we are trying to educate the public on this because this is such a dangerous bill, I mean, excuse me, amendment to the Constitution, and people need to be aware of it. Yes, um this, that um, article was written by Joy Pullman in the Federalist in uh, May of 2019. She, by the way, will be speaking at our National Eagle Council meeting in Washington the end of September, and there's information on that on our website. We'd love for anyone ahead, who's give you in a the website. area or who wants to go with us to, to attend. Uh, but the, the, the article references 
a study that was federally funded, so nobody can say, you know, this is biased. Uh, well, it, it may have been intended to be so, but it, but it, what it found, th- these are researchers that the Obama administration funded to assist Common Core's rollout to begin with, and they they found in a, a study published in May in in April of 2019, to their surprise, that under Common Core. U.S. student achievement has sunk dramatically in comparison with other high-performing nations. Uh, The study found not only lower student achievement since Common Core, but the data analysis that they performed suggested students would have done better if Common Core had never even existed. And, And not only that, but that achievement declines also grew worse over time. So how bad does it get? Um, in spite of the fact they found that teachers and uh, schools made massive good faith efforts to comply with Common Core, they mm-hmm. said, well, I know that's true in Alabama. We did a really good job of implementing it, which is, I think, one reason why we went from uh, uh, trending upward and, and having achieved uh, uh, a ranking of about 26th in the nation on one measure to, um, to dead last. Um, uh, currently, mm. after we had thoroughly implemented Common Core, wow! So it it, it it's just been a disaster over the whole nation. And, uh, and ACT has gone down uh, also. It, ACT has gone down. NAEP scores, um, especially in math, uh, that. Uh, but also, uh, <clears throat> there's a significant uh, negative um, uh, downward trend in in literacy uh, as well. And um, the key culprits are the standards themselves and then the type of teaching that, that Common Core requires. And this this is nationwide, folks. This is not just Alabama. Alabama's mm-hmm. fallen into the, the uh, deep pit of uh, re- the Common Core pit, I'll call it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's something that... Uh, we all knew was controlled by the federal government. I mean, we had proven that before. But the fact of the matter, these standards, they said this standard doesn't dictate curriculum. Well, it does because within the standards, it tells them exactly how they're supposed to do stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, well, uh, go ahead, give that website. Uh, you need give your website so people could go on and look at these things. Yeah, it's alabamaeagle.org. AlabamaEagle.org. And click on the events tab, kind of on the, the lower portion of the homepage, and you can see about our the conference coming up in D.C. in September. Okay. And you can also sign up for emails on our website. So we'd love to, to have your listeners on there so they can get updates on all the exciting stuff that we're watching. Can they also uh, become a member of the Eagle Forum on your website? Oh, Absolutely. Please, and we we invite you. So uh, we will encourage you to do that because you will, if you say, well, I don't really know what's going on. Well, just become a member of Eagle Forum. It's very simple to do and very inexpensive to do. Uh, I think it's an annual membership there. What is that? Tell us, uh, uh, Becky, what the membership is. Uni, I forgot the prices have changed. I think is it fifty dollars is an annual membership. I don't have that right in front of me. Yeah, that would be federal and state, or national, I should say, and state uh, newsletters um, that would be included in that, as well as, of course, all the alerts and informational materials that you would get. And these folks will keep you up to date of what's going on. If you say, "I don't know what's going on," well, uh, join this group. And you will, and it's a very strong conservative group uh, that uh, stays to the truth, by the way. They don't get hung off on a bunch of tangents. So uh, I can tell you that from experience. So, um, But um, anyway, uh, uh, Alabama, for AlabamaEagle.org. .org. AlabamaEagle.org. Now, one of the things that's happened here, uh, the – Governor just, you know, back in uh, June, early June, 
uh, released a um, an article <coughs> stating about them taking the lead of the Alabama Initiative, talking about this SB 397 that's coming up for vote in March of 2020, and uh, just giving it praises of how great it's going to be. That Alabama's only one of so many states, a few states that still elect their school board. And then they go into a, a, a thing where the other school boards that do appointments, they seem to have higher ratings uh, than does Alabama. In other words, uh, referring to uh, what they c call the reason to appoint members of the school board is because you end up with better ratings. <laughs> how, how about... Well, uh, that's in I was going to say that's interesting. There are six states, um, according to the 2017 information that we have on school governance, there are six states that have the same model that we have that still elect their school boards. And of those six, two of them um, have higher scores than the national average. Two states have the same as the national average, and two states are lower than the national average. So you, you can't say that our model is horrible because two-thirds of them are the same or above the national level. Mm -hmm. They're all different models. Um, the model that uh, is being proposed to us um, is appointed by the governor, yes, but according to SB 398, it uh, would require that the minority caucus in the House and Senate provide nominations to the governor for each of probably three of the nine seats on the newly formed appointed commission. So it wouldn't be solely the governor's decision even. It would be uh, her choice made from um, three nominations uh, for each of three seats. Um, in other words, there would be a, three nominations each seat um, given to her from whom, from, from which she could choose. Um, so, you know, it's a little, it would be difficult even to hold her completely accountable because yeah. the minority caucus would have, uh, such a, a heavy influence in the final selection. And in addition, they got to be approved by the Senate. Yeah, they do. So they all have to be approved by the Senate. Uh, now, I guess folks, if you're listening in, we're talking to Uni Smith. <laughs> Uh, who is the president of Eagle Forum National in uh, Alabama, and we have executive director of Eagle Forum here in Alabama, Miss Becky Garrison, and we're talking about an upcoming uh, vote that's going to happen in March 2020 here in Alabama, uh, and it's uh, a constitutional amendment is what it is, and if passed, the school board members will no longer be selected by you, yeah. the people. Mm -hmm. You will not be able to elect them. They will be appointed by politicians. And so this becomes a power grab. Now, you say, okay, well, big deal. Let them appoint it. <laughs> well, why don't you just let the government do everything instead of us having representative government? That's what we are, yeah. representative why don't we government. Let the, why don't we let, in that respect, Danny, let's let the, re, the, the governor and um, the Senate choose who the Senate is representatives are going to be oh yeah and the house of representatives you know let, let them choose that i mean you know we're too busy to get involved in that totalitarian we're we're, <laughs> we're giving and, we're giving power away the power of the people yeah that's right right, right. and you know what's kind of funny about this whole thing is i believe it was 1970-ish we alabama used to have an appointed school board but it was considered too political because it was appointed, that it switched over to elections. And wow. now we're at this point, and now we're trying to go back mm. in with the argument that it, it's too political now being elected, so we're going to have appointments, so that will take the politics out of it. That is the argument that they gave on the floor, that this would take politics out of the school board. Wow. Mm -hmm. Very, very enlightening, that is. Mm. Well, um Senator Morris made a statement in this article here. It says, I believe students learn best when innovation is allowed to take place in the classroom. If we have a school board that is made up of qualified individuals who are held accountable, 
we can increase local control, reduce the amount of time the legislature spends on education reform, and put the power back where it belongs in the hands of educators. Uh, well, I might uh, make a quick comment on this. He's making the statement of having more uh, qualified individuals who are held accountable. What more accountability do you have than the one is who is elected? He can be unelected mm. the next time they run. Yeah. But uh, these statements of increasing local control, more accountability, and less time for the legislators. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, that is totally wrong. Yeah. Uh, but uh, hey, Danny, can I point something out also? One of the arguments, and I, I just want your listeners to be prepared for what they're going to hear when it comes time to vote. We're kind of being told by the legislature that they have talked to the school board and they're all in favor of this, or a large majority are in favor of going to an appointment. So Uni had asked me to check this out, and I, I actually called and emailed all of the school board members yesterday so I could be ready for this interview today. And I still have not heard back from directly from three of them, although I do have some quotes from the papers. But Dr. Richardson, Dr. Newman, Mrs. Ziegler, and Ms. Bell, Stephanie Bell, we know, I, I talked to them personally, they're against it. Mm -hmm. um, they would rather it remain elected. However, Dr. Richardson and Dr. Newman said, of course, we will respect the, the vote and, and whatever the people want, that's fine. But they personally would like it to stay an elected board. Um, Tracy West said that she wants an effective board. Whether it's elected or appointed, it doesn't really matter to her as long as it's effective. So that's I don't really have a she's for or against. She just wants mm -hmm. to have a good board. Ella Bell has been quoted in the paper multiple times that she's against it. Um, again, I did not hear back from her personally to ask her, but I do have several quotes where she thought it was a ridiculous idea and she would like it to remain as a vote. And then also Dr. McCarty and Dr. Reynolds, those are the two that I have not personally heard back from and could not find any good quotes with the time I had yesterday. So... Mm. Just so you know, there's not a large majority of them that are really looking forward to an appointed board. Well, and there are also, this is basically, they're lying if people are saying that they're all for it. <laughs> when they're not all for it, that's just a plain, mm -hmm. bold-faced lie. Well, uh, this, Becky, is not, and Dr. McCarty can certainly correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, uh, I had heard, and hearsay doesn't mean truth, that she is not real pleased with this bill uh, of the boards being appointed. Now, again, that's hearsay, so I can't speak for her behalf. But just like you said, the uh, majority of these board members are not for this uh, to happen. And um, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully the people are not. Hopefully the people don't say, I'm going to give away my right to vote uh, in the future mm -hmm. and have a say-so with their local board members. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, people, that's what we're saying. We're we're asking you when March comes along, and this program is going to be repeated as we get closer to the uh, March time frame. Uh, but uh, we're asking you to vote against this amendment. Uh, and that's what we're mm -hmm. saying here. Uh, this is a dangerous uh, amendment. It's going to be taking away more of your rights. Mm -hmm. So uh, Yes, and Danny, there's another part of this bill that, came out during the committee hearings that I thought was so important. They're, they're going to be six-year terms, and the people that serve on these can serve for two terms. And they're staggered terms so that, you know, they will overlap with people. But there is no impeachment process in this bill. So let's say they appoint someone on there who turns out to be a horrible mm. commissioner or, you know, a horrible board member, commission member, how what are the what are the steps to remove someone mm. i i think that's an important thing that, that i wish point. they kind of would have spelled out yeah but you may be stuck with someone for six years and have a very hard time getting rid of them so i, I thought that was kind of interesting that's a very good point yeah. becky mm -hmm. yeah so you get stuck with it yeah um yeah. uh, mm -hmm. i know that um the statement was made also by the senator that the board that we have today is totally dysfunctional. Um, now, that's kind of a 
slap in the face talking about the fact that they've had so many uh, 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 superintendents of the education. Well, they really hadn't, in the sense of the word, hadn't had that many because there's been some interims. You know, you had to have, when one goes, you got to have somebody appointed uh, in their place until somebody's actually appointed full time. But regardless, um, doesn't usually in corporate life, when a company is dysfunctional, who usually ends up having to take the blame? I believe that's the CEO. Mm-hmm. The CEO of the State Board of Education is Governor Ivy. So for them to make a statement that this completely dysfunctional board is to say that they're not, Governor Ivy is not doing a good job. So, yeah. Governor, uh, uh, they're talking about you here. But yeah. uh, Let me again say that their website for Alabama – the Eagle Forum is alabamaeagle.org, alabamaeagle.org. These ladies have uh, have worked real hard uh, in Montgomery, Birmingham, all over, meeting with, they've met with the Board of Education members, they've met with politicians, and just constantly trying to warn uh, the folks that this bill is dangerous and how dangerous it is. It, it goes back, I guess, when we were all fighting against the Common Core ladies. We kept trying to warn them of the dangers of Common Core. Um, and, again, it went on deaf ears, and look what we have six and seven years later. Mm-hmm. A disaster in the United States as far as our education is concerned. So... Uh, I know we have new listeners that come in every so often, and we just wanted to keep you up to date what's going on. Yeah, well, let's, let's go back and kind of review. Okay, so number one, uh, what, what we've been talking about here is that the upcoming election, 2020, there was going to be on the Alabama ballot an amendment to the Alabama state constitution, which would uh, do what, Danny? Well, it will remove... Our option to elect our own school board representatives within our district. Okay. And it will it will tie us in our constitution for the first time to a national standard, education standard. Mm-hmm. Of, of uh, so th- that's the danger. Mm-hmm. All they got to do all they got to do is just change the name from Common Core to call it whatever they want to call it. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, Ladies, uh, Becky, was not the Common Core a national standard? Yes. The first first one we ever as a nation adopted. Okay, so Common Core was a national standard. So this is going to take the place of Common Core. So we're having a new standard. This, This constitutional amendment will give us, by in part of the Alabama Constitution in order to have a national standard in lieu or instead of Common Core. So is there any other national standard right now? Not that all states, not that other states have adopted. So but this, is, this is the one that, that uh, you know, the, the Constitution would, would say that we would have to have a nationwide consistency and that we would have to be able to seamlessly transfer from state from our state to other states so the only way to do that currently would be to continue common core by whatever name but you just can't call it common core then because yeah, it right. says it's in lieu of common core right right right. so we're replacing to me it sounds well, like we're, we're we're not calling it common core now we're just saying we're aligned with common core yeah, yeah. It seems like we're Same replacing difference. We're replacing Common Core with Common Core, but you just can't call it Common Core. And folks, That's are right. we going around in circles? I remember seeing my dog chase his tail. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what are you doing? Stop that. We're well, not getting anywhere. Kind of like an illustration I used when we are <laughs> go- going for the Senate committee uh, years ago about Common Core. Alabama changed their name, you know, to Alabama Standards and so forth, uh-huh. and said, oh, it's not Common Core. I said, well, if you have an apple pie and you put whipped cream on it, on the top, mm-hmm. does it become a whipped cream pie? No, it's still an apple pie. <laughs> and that's just exactly what's happened. They added 3% or so to Common mm-hmm. Core and changed the name to Alabama, whatever. Yeah. It 
And uh, says, oh, it's not Common Core, it's Alabama. Oh, no, it's not whipped cream, folks. It's still the apple pie. That's right. Good illustration. And it's, it seems to me it's, we're worse now because if we pass this and Alabamians basically generally vote yes on, you know, statewide amendments. And so am I right with that, ladies? Do they generally do yeah. that? They they do often yes. Okay, so then we're going to be stuck with this as a state amendment, and uh, you know this is going to be the standard that it's in our constitution that we have to go by, folks. I think this is very very dangerous. Yes, it is, and um, you reemphasize again uh, what this means if it goes into our constitution. Well, it not only means that we no longer have the opportunity to elect our own state board of education members, um, that instead they, we we will be subject to um, our schools being governed by an appointed commission appointed by the governor uh, with uh, nominations for a third of the nine-member board being from the minority caucus in the House and Senate. So um, it will be much more politicized, <clears throat> excuse me, after, if this amendment is passed than, than, than it is now, by a long shot. And um, it also means that um, language which will require uh, continuation of some form of national standard uh, will be enshrined in our Constitution. So we really won't be able to get out from under Common Core mm. as, as a result of this. Now we can. Now either the Senate and House or the elected board members can reject Common Core and replace it with whatever they want to replace it with. Mm. But with if this is passed, they won't have that option. They'll have to use something that is being used along with other states according to the language that's being placed in our Constitution by this constitutional amendment. I have, uh, you know, as you know, uh, I sent an email to all the board members, state board members, asking them to go ahead now and repeal or replace Common Core before this bill comes up, which they can do. Now, we've had some illnesses by those that would vote in our favor on this. And uh, hopefully they're getting better to the point to where they'll be able to vote. But there's still a need for at least one more person to uh, step in and say, hey, we need to stop this. We, we have the proof. The proof of Common Core being a disaster is just widespread. Yes. There is no question about it. It's, somebody says, well, we can fix it. No, you cannot fix it. It's It's... It's it, the framework. It's that, a bad design. Yeah. That's, uh, it's just bad, bad design, as you said, mm. Brother Jerry. Um, and, no, it's, it's, not, it's not fixable. We've already tinkered with it, and it hasn't worked. And other states have done the same thing. We have to go back to a sound framework for education. We are, in math, for example, two years behind what, what students were taught um, prior to Common Core. Wow. Th- across the nation. Um, and two years behind higher achieving countries. Hmm. So then how do they, they've lost that time, they can't reach to higher levels. I have a friend who hires in India uh, engineers, and he said, I don't want to do that, but I can't find qualified people in the United States. My children were being taught Common Core. I discovered math. He said, I discovered how bad it was when my um, oldest child asked for help in algebra, and, and I said, sure, um, Elizabeth, what's six times three? And she said, well, Dad, give me a pencil and paper, and I'll be able to figure that out. <laughs> she oh, hadn't my. been taught math facts, she, and yet she was supposed to be doing algebra. Oh, my. And then he discovered that was what was going on in the school, so he moved them to another school, a uh, private school. Mm. Uh, it's affected private education, too, unfortunately, mm. but... Um, this is it's just a flawed system and uh, we we know it now it's apparent we need to stop it but but this constitutional amendment will instead enshrine this type of national um, 
um, disaster, really, yeah, yeah. on our children. There are lots of other problems with it, too. It, it, it's it's a political indoctrination, um, in my view, is one of the main reasons why we have so many socialist uh, uh, ideas being promoted these days and those right. who say socialism is a good thing. Should we have uh, our listening audience, when we go to about 24 different counties um, and uh, Alabama, and we hit a couple in Georgia, but uh, should the people call their state board of education member and say, hey, uh, we're asking you to repeal Common Core. Can you go sure. ahead and do so? Yes, sir. They definitely should. And I would suggest that they call the governor because, of course, she has a vote and she has the bully pulpit. Mm -hmm. And she could get this uh, a vote right now is pending for replacement of Common Core math. Um, she could get that done anytime she wanted to. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that your listeners call the governor and their own state board member. And so and the vote to repeal or to, to get new standards for math was going to be in March. Um, mm -hmm. But luckily, and I'm so proud of Eagle Forum, we had discussions with the governor and explained what these new standards they wanted to bring us. They were just an, a copy of the, stand, the Common Core standards that had already been in place for the lower grades. And they were Common Core for the upper grades with two extra areas that were horrible and so she stopped that vote, um, mm -hmm. but they still they still need to vote on math, and they're putting it off, and we're afraid they're still going to adopt the same Common Core standards. But so those phone calls would really help. Mm, that's good. And uh, the math standards that we're asking them to adopt, other than the Common Core, are. We suggested Minnesota, but but uh, there are others, uh, Massachusetts, a combination of of either of those, and what we were using successfully prior to Common Core, what Alabama was using successfully, which had been rated one of the best math systems uh, standards in, in the nation prior to Common Core. So uh, there there are available um, standards that we know work. Minnesota, the reason we suggested Minnesota is because they've never adopted Common Core math, yeah. and they are doing quite well, second now, in the nation. Now, some of the ones... And the Massachusetts, before Common Core, like Uni had said, were very... They were the best in the nation mm -hmm. um, before Common Core came in. So those would be good as well. Let me... Uh, I, I want to go through and, and name some of the folks that they can call uh, that can help. I know we have uh, those that are in favor of re repealing this now. I believe, uh, correct me where I'm wrong and, and insert whatever. Uh, Stephanie Bell is on with us. I think you mentioned this earlier, Uni. Yes. Uh, Jackie Ziegler yes. is uh, with us. Uh, what about Mr. Mackey? Uh, oh, no. no, he's not. Okay. And Tracy West is not at this time. Except, excuse me now, Mackey does not have a vote. He is the superintendent. Oh, that's right. He's superintendent. He can bring them up. And, and right now, unfortunately, he is delaying that vote. Yeah. But with the majority, uh, the majority can can place this vote on the agenda. So if we have the majority, we, we, that would mean five votes. So the ones that, that it would be good for you to contact, of course, is the governor's office. And be very nice when you talk with these folks. Mm -hmm. Just tell them that we, we really need you to repeal Common Core. We do not need this bill that's coming up, this vote coming up for a constitutional amendment to pass. You can uh, take the wind out of the sail by re repealing Common Core. I'm going to say Dr. Cynthia McCarty here in our area, Calhoun County area. Uh, uh, if you could call her and talk to her and tell her that you would like to have Common Core repealed, it's been a disaster, and uh, uh, talk with her. She would be one of those that could uh, help in this, um, uh, you know, make a change in her decision and so forth to go uh, go, go against this and so she can be reelected. And you might say that you would rather have the opportunity to elect 
Cynthia and whomever may run instead of somebody appointing them from the governor. Mm -hmm. um, I believe Mr. Newman's on our side. Yes, sir. Yes. And what about Dr. Reynolds? Uh, he is. Okay. He, he's just uh, needs needs our prayers for recovery. Yeah, he's he's going through some real tough times right now. And um, I've missed uh, who have I missed? Uh, Richard. Bella Bell. She is uh, for repealing Common Core Mass. Yvette uh, Richardson. I don't know her stat. I I don't know. I have not had conversations with her personally about it. Um, Where's she located? I was going to tell you. She's District 4. I think it's, she's Birmingham and to the south, uh, to the west. Is that correct? That Bessemer part of Shelby mm -hmm. County. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's within our um, listening area. Mm -hmm. You can go to alabamaeagle.org, and at the top of our menu bar, there's contact elected officials, and the state school board is on there. So you Super. can click, and there's phone numbers and email addresses for every board member, as well as the governor. Super. So that we is. We need to do this right away and get get the children out from under Common Core Mass. Yes. So this is alabamaeagle.org, alabamaeagle.org, and, mm -hmm. and go out there yes. and you can across the top. You'll see contact elected officials. So, folks, again, we're talking about an, an amendment to our Constitution in March of 2020 that's coming up for a vote. We hope that you will get the word out. I know that uh, you say, well, wait a minute, that's March. Uh, we need to get the wheels rolling now. We wait to March. One of the things that we have a problem with when this happens is that the other side usually has the money to spend on TV advertisements, radio, uh, news, and so forth. We don't have that kind of money to do that. So word of mouth is how we need to get it out, and we need to get it out now before it's too late. Mm -hmm. We have Miss Uni Smith with us, and we also have Miss Becky Garrison with us, and uh, they're from Eagle Forum. Uh, Uni is president of Eagle Forum in our nation and in Alabama, and Becky is the executive director. I say that, folks, because we have new people that tune in every five to ten minutes uh, on this. So... Um, refreshing you need to give us a, just a refresher on this and uh um i know people are saying wow wow what's going on here yeah why don't we have each lady we'll start with you uni and then we'll get to you becky just kind of give us an overview for a couple minutes and um why that this would be a bad constitutional amendment and then we'll kind of close this thing out yep well, what we're looking at with this constitutional amendment, which will be on the ballot in March of 2020, is uh, the uh, not only the removal of our right to vote for our own choice for state board of education members um, that that would be appointed by the governor, so it would become a purely political situation in the future as to who's governing our state board, our state education process in this in the state um, but we're also looking at this amendment which would enshrine into the constitution the requirement that the state use national standards as opposed to standards developed by alabama for alabama without any obligation to make them match what's going on in the rest of the country and uh one of the things that uh, Common Core has done, it would, it would enshrine Common Core by whatever name into our Constitution, our state Constitution. And one of the statements that was made by T Professor Terrence Moore, Common Core is taking away the great stories of a great people that teach us how to be good, just, brave, loving, and free, to love the beautiful, to find true happiness, to pursue truth. These are the traditional aims of education common core smears america with the brush of racism and sexism mm. and in so doing it encourages both we don't need any more of this and in order to stop it we need to ask our elected state board members to replace common core instead of uh, voting for this constitutional amendment oh, very good becky go ahead well, and I just would second everything Uni just said. 
along with um, the fact I think most Americans and most Alabamians, we we want to have our voice heard by our vote. And Eagle Forum of Alabama and Eagle Forum nationally, we believe that the best way to hold public officials accountable is through elections. So we would prefer and would love to stay as an elected board. Another thing to point out is that there is no impeachment process for these members. So once they're on the board, they will be on for six years and can be on there twice. You can serve two six-year terms. Um, But at this point, we know nothing about how to get rid of someone who is not performing up to standards. So I think just in closing, I would say vote no on the statewide amendment that you will see on the March 3rd ballot in 2020. Mm -hmm. And you can actually uh, go online at alabamaeagle.org, alabamaeagle.org, and find out more information about this, how to contact your local school board officials that are there now and tell them to repeal Common Core immediately. And you know what, folks? I suggest highly that you join Alabama Eagle to stay up to date with what's going on because these ladies, and there are a lot more of them uh, uh, associated here with Eagle Forum that constantly are keeping up with legislation and i appreciate all that you ladies have been doing and mm-hmm. uh, our associations together and uh, you keep me up to date that's the one thing i like yeah. too well, ladies thank you so much for taking the time to inform our listeners really a heartfelt uh, thank you to you and uh, to do all this work and and keep us you know aware of the cunningness of politics down in Montgomery. We well, appreciate thank you, you for having us. Mm-hmm. Very definitely. God and we bless have, you. Yes, and we have some big issues coming down the pike regarding transgenderism, mm. um, some sex ed stuff. We would love to be a guest on in the future to kind of raise awareness within your listeners on some of these issues that we will be fighting um, at the state and national level and are now yes. fighting these at the national level. So. Well, we'll do it. Thank you for this opportunity. God bless you, and thank you, ladies, for being with us. Thank you, ma'am. You bet. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, we've just had Uni Smith and Miss Becky Garrison of uh, Eagle Forum on with us, and uh, we just appreciate all that they've done. And we've had them in the past, and we Mm -hmm. will have them in the future. Yeah. Hey, folks, if you want a, uh, a copy of this program this morning, if you didn't get to hear the whole thing and would be glad to do that anytime, just contact us. Send us an email to truth at trinityoxford.org. Truth at trinityoxford.org. And we'll be glad. Just put your name and address there and be glad to send you a free CD copy of this. I might add, too, at the end of this, uh, there are con- some concerns, too, by those that program this. If this. Uh, amendment is passed to the Constitution that this may remove some of the existing uh, jobs in the education. Alabama Math, Science, and Technology Initiative, which is AMSTI, Mm A-M-S-T-I, and the ARI, which is Alabama Reading Program, and the SIM Program. These are concerns. Mm -hmm. We're still trying to study to determine if that's the case, but it looks like there possibly may be a direction to do that that affects a lot of a lot of you listeners here uh that are in jsu and all the uh different areas so we'll try to get more information on that as time goes by and we'll bring you up to date on this later on too well just kind of a summary danny give us uh take a minute and give us a summary of what we've talked about here now this hour march of 2020 you're going to have on your ballot a constitutional amendment to remove your opportunity to elect your own state school board representatives. The politicians want you want themselves to be able to appoint it. And in addition to that, it's going to seal in our Constitution for the first time in its history mm-hmm. a national educational standard. Folks, that's a national educational standard. Mm-hmm. The only one that's ever existed is Common Core. And it has been an absolute disaster. Absolutely. All they got to do is change your name, and guess what? Yeah, we're, we're stuck. stuck. Yeah, just we're can't stuck. call it Common Core. Vote against this Constitution. Get this word out to all your friends and families throughout mm-hmm. the state. Vote no to the Constitution, no amendment. And who, who sponsored this bill? 
It's sponsored by one of the main authors is Senator Marsh right here. And mm-hmm. A lot of the senators have signed co-sponsored it. it. Co- and the governor has signed into it. Yes. So we need mm-hmm. to let them know. Of course, let you, call your state school board. Go to alabamaeagle.org and get their names and numbers and give them a call and say, repeal Common Core now. Danny, I remember when some of these same representatives were trying to implement Common Core, which has utterly failed. Now they're trying to make a state constitutional amendment of the same type of program, just with a different name. The amendment says, in lieu of Common Core, so you can't call it Common Core. But Danny, it's like your illustration of the apple pie. You could put whipped cream on an apple pie, but it's still an apple pie.